Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded training session to support the planning and delivery of the Pearson Edexcel GCSE Geography Specification B qualification. My name is Andrea Wood and I've worked for Pearson in various roles now for about 10 years. This is the new to Edex Edexcel session and is designed to support centres and staff who are new or relatively new to this qualification. Thank you for taking the time to join this training today and I hope that you find it useful and informative. This training session is designed to support colleagues in their understanding about how the qualification is structured and assessed, to discuss possible ways of delivering the detailed content, and to have a close look at all three components, providing opportunities to analyse and mark exemplar responses. There will also be details of where further support and training can be assessed at the end of this training. The slide shows the approximate timings for today's training. The first 45 minutes will focus on planning and delivery, whilst the second part of the session will focus on assessment and marking activities using exemplars from the summer 2019 series and the last time we had a full summer exam series. Please also note that sample assessment materials, specimen papers, and all the past papers, mark schemes, and examiner's reports are available to download on the Excel website. Some of these resources are padlocked so they can be used by teachers for mock exams, home learning, and so on. To begin with, I'm going to spend a few minutes providing an overview of this qualification, considering the script structure and content of the specification and how students will be assessed at the end of their course. The key features of the Geography B specification include an issues-based approach. This allows students to investigate people environment issues at several scales from global to local. Papers 1 and 2 include physical, human and environmental topics at different scales. Fieldwork is assessed in paper two, and paper three is a decision-making paper that involves investigating people and environment issues. The specification clearly sets out the geographical content and accompanying skills that you need to teach. There are clear requirements for understanding and incorporating case studies and locating examples within the detailed content. It's a manageable approach to fieldwork and assessments that give every student a chance to succeed. As with all GCSEs, the guided learning hours is 120 hours over two years. Breaking it down by component over the next few slides, you'll see to allow about 45 hours for each of components one and two. So that's approximately 15 hours for each of the three topics in component one, the global paper, and 22 and a half hours per topic in the component two, the UK paper, which includes nine hours for teaching physical fieldwork and nine hours human fieldwork. And that's not including field trips. For component three, you'll need to allow 30 hours for teaching the biosphere overview and ecosystems and energy topics. Specification B offers an issues-based approach to content and assessment, and the content is split by global and UK scale. Three components assessed by these three papers are component one, the global issues, which is worth 37.5% of the GCSE, component two, which is the UK's issues component, worth 37.5% of the GCSE, which includes fieldwork drawn from one physical and one human environment with 15% of the GCSE. Component three is the people and environment issues, making geographical decisions, and it's worth 25% of the GCSE, which draws on knowledge and understanding from topic seven, eight, and nine, people in the biosphere, forests under threat, and consuming energy resources. Within component one, global issues, all students are required to study all three topics. In topic one, all students study tectonic hazards and tropical cyclones. In topic two, all students study development issues 
in an emerging country, for example, a BRIC country, you have the flexibility to choose the country study. In topic three, students must study issues of a mega city in an emerging country, for example, Mumbai in India, or a developing country, um, Lagos in Nigeria. You have the flexibility to choose the study city. You can nest your city study within a country. For example, in topic two, do Mumbai. In topic three, you do India. Or you can increase breadth of place knowledge by offering a city study in a different country to your development country study. We have a link in the spec to a list of countries by our three definitions. And we'll come on to that later. Component two is the UK's issues paper where students are required to study rivers and coasts in the evolving physical landscape topic and cities and urban society in the evolving human landscape topic. In the geographical investigations topic, then just have the choice of completing fieldwork in a river or coastal environment and an urban or rural environment. Component three, this is where students will study all three topics, people in the biosphere, an overview of people's relationships with the biosphere, forests under threat, studies of both tropical rainforests and the tiger, evergreen, boreal forests of Russia, North America or Scandinavia, and consuming energy resources. Paper one is split into three sections corresponding to each topic. Each section is marked after 30, and students should spend 30 minutes on each section. The maximum mark tariff for each section is eight marks, which will have a level-based mark scheme. In paper two, section A, physical landscapes, there are questions on rivers and coasts, maximum mark of eight, and it's expected that students would spend about 25 minutes in section A Section B is similar to Section A, but on the human landscapes, with questions on cities and urban societies, with a maximum mark of eight. It's expected that students will spend 25 minutes on Section B. In Section C1, there's optionality, and candidates should answer one fieldwork question based on either rivers or coasts, and there's one question with a maximum mark of eight marks, and the same applies in Section 2 where there's optionality and candidates should answer questions on fieldwork either on an urban or rural environment. Again, one question with a maximum of eight marks. It's expected that students will spend 20 minutes on section C1 and 20 minutes on section C2. Paper three, the decision-making exercise, is based on topics seven, eight and nine in component three. It's based on an energy issue relating to either the tropical rainforest or the tiger. That's the boreal forest of Russia, North America, Scandinavia, but in an unseen location. It's expected that students will spend 30 minutes reading through the resource booklet and 60 minutes on the question paper in paper three. Spelling, punctuation and grammar is 5% of the total 240 marks. So 12 marks are available across the three papers. In paper one, there's four marks on a question in section B. On paper two, there's four marks in, again on the, on the last question in section B. And then in paper three, there's four marks on the last question in section C. In the next part of this training session, we're going to focus on how this qualification might be delivered and some of the key points that one might consider when planning to do this. Four key questions to address are, how the design of the specification can help you planning what to teach? How and when to deliver geographical skills? Where the case studies and loca located examples in the specification are and which places are you going to choose? And managing fieldwork. On screen, you can see how the specification is intended to be used by those teaching the course. 
Each topic is driven by broad inquiry questions. This is then split into several key ideas, which will have two to three strands of detailed content. We advise that one lesson should be spent on each strand of the detailed content. This gives teachers a guide on the depth to go into and the time that should be spent on each topic. When preparing students for exams, the advice is that the one to four mark questions are likely to focus on the detailed content, whereas the longer eight mark extended writing questions will have a broader focus and are likely to encompass content throughout a key idea. As there is no specific skills paper or section in the exams, we expect the skills to be taught throughout the GCSE course, and therefore we have signposted each skill and linked this to specific content. The GCSE Geography B specification has been designed so that teachers can deliver the content comfortably over 120 guided learning hours and still have adequate time for revision, assessment and field work. Alternatively, some centres have moved to a three-year Key Stage 4, with students starting their GCSE courses in Year 9. These editable two-year and three-year course planners can be downloaded from the Edexcel Geography Qualifications page on the website. The course planners have been produced to help you implement this Edexcel specification. They are offered as an example of a possible model that you should feel free to adapt to meet your needs and is not intended to be any way prescriptive. Starting with geographical skills, there is considerable emphasis on cartographic, numerical and statistical skills in geography. The assessment of geographical, maths and statistics skills will make up at least 10% of the overall assessment. Students are required to develop a range of geographical skills, including mathematics and statistics skills, throughout the course of their study. And these skills may be assessed across any of the examined components. Examples of generic geographical skills include the construction of graphs to present data, for example, bar charts and line graphs, and mathematical calculations, such as the mean and the range. Generic skills which are not specifically tied to a particular subject content. A full list of geographical, mathematical and statistical skills can be found on pages 37 and 38 of the specification. Some geographical skills are specific to particular topic content. And these are numbered within the content and indicated in the integrated skills sections within the topics throughout the content pages. In this example, the understanding of climate graphs and world maps are integrated with 7.1a and the use of interpretation of line graphs is linked with 7.2c. These skills are specific to particular subject content and will only be assessed within these contexts. These are indicated in the integrated skills section within the topics throughout the specification. One of the DfE requirements of the GCSE geography was that there should be more in-depth understanding of place and contextual knowledge surrounding case studies and examples. That is to say, more in-depth case studies rather than many superficial case studies. Of course, Paper 2 is entitled UK Geographical Issues and in many ways is an extended case study in its own right, again reflecting DFE and off-call requirements to put the UK in more central position in the teaching of the subject. One of the more frequently asked questions we got about the previous GCSE geography courses was about the number of required case studies and the located examples and the confusion about the differences between the two. 
So for the 2016 qualification, we took an approach that meets the DfE subject content requirements of always providing context to any exemplars used, whilst not overloading curriculum with lots of extra content by not requiring that examples are drawn from lots of places. The three in-depth case studies already include the contextual place based in understanding in the detailed content to be taught over several weeks of lessons. There is also the flexibility to next the in-depth case studies. The topic three case study on the megacity can be a city in the country chosen in topic two development case study. And as said before, many choose Mumbai and India, but there's absolutely no compulsion to do so. In terms of countries needed to cover the overall specification content, it can be delivered with a reference to a minimum of three countries as per the DFE requirements, the UK and at least two others. We reflected carefully on how to define and categorise levels of development in the 2016 GCSE and AS and A-level specifications. It was a common source of confusion that we had different definitions across our GCSE specifications and again at AS and A-level. Developing the GCSE and A-levels together meant that we were able to use common definitions and this will help with progression in the understanding of development. We define development not by narrow indicators of income such as gross national income or gross national product but underpins some definitions such as those published by the IMF or the World Bank, but a broader, more stable, less volatile than monetary indicators, which means your case studies won't go out of date. The Human Development Index is easy to understand and revised each year and accessible through the United Nations database and is taught in Key Stage 3. Thus, it's an integral part of geographers' understanding of development to some of others available. The Human Development Index allows for better understanding of progressive, dynamic nature of development, demonstrating how countries can move up the index. Bangladesh no longer considered low or developing, but medium and newly emerging. And down, Russia, although very rich and developed in parts, with relatively high income from oil and gas, it does not share very high human development or other rich development countries such as the UK, US or Japan, so was considered emerging. However, all such categorization has its flaws and in an issues-based specification, there should be, these should be addressed in the appropriate context. So, for example, the absence of political measurements in the Human Development Index means that freedom expression is not included as an indicator of development. This level of awareness is part of the thinking like a geographer approach that underpins this specification. Also, throughout the content, there are located examples from developing, emerging, and or developed countries that need to be taught. Where a located example should be taught, a globe symbol is used in the detailed content. Here's an example of where we've signposted a located example should be taught. The named examples of developing or emerging and or develop, developed countries signposted by the globe are not in-depth case studied. Case studies, just a named place taught as one part of one key idea and over approximately one lesson and can be nested in the in-depth case studies to give them a wider place look and locational context. Importantly, as this specification is dedicated to UK content component, any located examples drawn from the UK are, of course, already going to be set within a broader place study context of the UK. And, as an example shown on the slide, the choice of a chosen river may well be determined by the decisions made over fieldwork. Any located examples must be set within the broader contextual knowledge of the country. Its location, so students understand the causes, processes and issues, and its level of development, so students understand why and how different countries respond in different ways. 
This is where the case studies and located examples are required in the specification content. It's here where locational or contextual knowledge of the countries from which these case studies and located examples are required. There are three case studies and six located examples to be taught in the specification. And this is how it could work across a range of levels of development. How might this look in terms of places you select? Here you can see the specific content point and located examples in green and in-depth case studies in red. Here you can see how you consolidate your case studies and located examples into the same countries in order to develop and build depth of contextual knowledge of place rather than dipping in and out of countries and places across the globe with only a patchwork or superficial knowledge of the place context. You could increase breadth of place knowledge slightly by offering a case study of a megacity in a developing country. When planning, you can also think about which countries and regions have been studied at Key Stage 3 in order to build on their existing knowledge and understanding. To be clear, a megacity is an urban area of over a million, 10 million people rather, a major UK city is one with a population of over 200,000. There is flexibility here to use urban area population as long as you're able to cover all the content points, 5.3 to 5.8 in your teaching. Please be reassured that any suggestions here are no more than that. There are very many alternatives available. It is important to use the case studies to frame the detailed content. Whilst candidates don't get credit for just naming a river they studied in the example on screen, if they don't name a river in their answer, then they will not be able to access the full marks, as you can see. Sample response on screen demonstrates how to get the full four marks in this question by framing their answer around the river time. This is an example of a four times one mark with a chain of re reasoning um, question. Rainfall is identified as the course, a one mark. Affecting discharge, one more mark. The ideas of overland flow and groundwater are understood, one mark. And the student explains impact on the bank for conditions. The response on screen is from paper two. The candidate has framed their answer upon, upon Newcastle upon time. And this question is a two times two answer where two separate points, in this case, positive and negative effects need to be made and each one developed. Geographical investigations topic in the UK Geographical Issues Unit, paper two, brings together the practical geographical inquiry into physical and human processes and environments and the interactions between the two. Experience of fieldwork helps students to develop new geographical insights into two of the contrasting environments studied in topic four and five of this component. Students must carry out two investigations in topic six that link to topics four and five. One investigation in a physical environment is either investigating coastal change and conflict or investigating river processes and pressures. And in a second investigation in a human environment from either investigating dynamic urban areas or investigating changing rural settlements. There's quite a lot to think about when you do field work, but many centres are likely to be driven by where their SLT or senior management will allow them out of school. It may seem a good idea to do the field work as close to the examination as possible, as it's 
now assess this way, and it's important to consider the following. The specification has been written in a way to integrate the required fieldwork environments. The content, the knowledge and understanding and skills around the UK's evolving physical landscape and the UK's evolving human landscape. Ideally, field work should be carried out when covering the related content in the specification. In order for students to be able to explore the types of questions that they could investigate and also to fully understand the purpose of the task, the methods and the broader significance of the investigation. The likelihood of being out, allowed out of school late in year 11 with GCFC's exams and revision it's recommended that for each investigation, that a minimum of one day of field work should be carried out. In addition, three weeks of lesson time should be spent on field work preparation, processing and presenting data, analysis, explanation and coming to conclusions. If following our two year linear model, field work is recommended to be carried out in the spring and summer terms of year 10. In the three year linear model, the geographical physical investigation should be done in the spring and summer terms of year nine, and the human geographical investigation should be done in the spring term of year 10. It's important to know an off call requirement in all 2016 specifications, shown on page 26 of the Pearson Edexcel specification is that inquiry should drive what students do in field work and how they go about it. Most stages, particularly stages two to five in this table, are familiar territory for GCSE geography. Their evaluative content may be less familiar, however, so that students in stage three would need to consider why certain methods of presenting data are more appropriate than others. There is a distinctly evaluative feel to field work in the specification because exam questions will assess only AO3 application and AO4 geographical skills. Students would never be asked in an exam simply to recall what they did in collecting data along a river, AO1 or 2. Except, expect that they will always be asked to apply what they know. Hence, a lack of familiarity at stages one and six. In stage one, it's important that students consider why their particular location may have been suitable for carrying out a particular investigation. In stage six, it's important that they evaluate all stages of the inquiry, in particular, assessing the accuracy and reliability of their methodology, results or conclusions. As a reminder that fieldwork requirements here, that remember that these tasks do not change year on year. Remember, you only have to do one physical and one human fieldwork investigation. We provide clear guidance as to what primary data collection needs to be carried out in the field in relation to these tasks. Centres will no doubt add to these basic needs but please be aware that questions will be set on the assumption that the basic field requirements have been fulfilled. Please note that students need to be fully aware of what is expected, expected of them in the context of field work. More of that later. But in brief, although field work selection and design might be a top-down process in most centres, Students need to be aware of the rationale of the decision-making process and the terminology, for example, primary and secondary data, quality, quantitative, river, river channel characteristics, flood risks, and so on. We have to assess students' ability to apply their own experience of fieldwork, both its strengths and weaknesses, as well as their ability to use and apply knowledge, understanding, and skills to novel contexts. As we have prescribed the broad, broad context environment, e.g. coasts, these questions should still be relevant or familiar to their own fieldwork experience, if not directly assessing it. 
Pearson has produced substantial support materials that should be very useful for candidates for conducting field work. There are also materials available through the Geographical Association and the Field Studies Council that centres will find invaluable. Next, we will consider the assessment model and we will be looking at the three question papers and mark schemes from the 2019 examination series. We'll also be looking at some real student responses and you'll have a chance to pause the recording and have a go at marking some of these. To place the assessment of this specification in context, it's important to understand what assessment objectives are and how they are targeted by different command words. AO1, knowledge, and AO2, understanding, together are worth 40%. AO3, application, and AO4, skills, together are worth 60%. This emphasis on application of knowledge, understanding, and skills is reflected in the demand of the assessments and the use of command words, which we'll come to later. Field work is worth 15% of the total assessment, 10% of the AO3 and 5% of the AO4. AO1 represents the marks awarded for recall. This can be standalone or integrated as part of an extended re response. AO2 represents marks awarded for using concepts and making links. AO3 represents marks awarded for applying knowledge and understanding. And this is important to interpret, analyse and evaluate geographical issues. AO4 represents marks awarded for, and this is important, selecting, adapting and using skills. All elements of the AOs must be targeted in every set of assessments in an examination series. And question types and command words have been designed to ensure this happens. At least 10% of the marks must be allocated to the assessment of mathematical and statistical techniques at a level appropriate to the qualification. And the number of marks available to credit the accuracy of spelling, punctuation and grammar and their use of specialist terminology must be equal to 5% of the subject marks. It is not the expectation that students will be especially familiar with the nature of these assessment objectives, but for the important extended writing questions, they need to know what to do and what not to do in their answers. We need to assess off-course assessment objectives across the assessment of qualification, and we need to hit the weightings of assessment objectives overall. The useful information that we can glean from this table includes selecting, adapting and using skills, AO4, is in all papers. But because of the field work included in paper two, this has a slightly greater weighting on skills. Field work questions account for 5% of the skill mark in, in paper two. For the same reason, the inclusion of field work Paper 2 also has the highest weighting for AO3 marks. Field work questions account for 10% of the AO3 marks in Paper 2. Paper 1 has a slightly greater weighting of AO1 and AO2. These are marks awarded for recall and facts and of using concepts and making links. Paper 3 has a sizable weighting of AO3 too in comparison with the other AOs. This is because the candidates are required to apply knowledge and understanding of topics 7, 8 and 9 to interpret, analyse and evaluate a real novel geographical issue through the making of geographical decision scenario. A range of different question types will be used within all examinations in order to assess a variety of requirements and facilitate differentiation. The different question types used are multiple choice questions where students are required to select the correct answer from a choice of four, A, B, C and D, 
a variation of this might be used is where students are required to select two correct answers from a choice of five. Short open response, usually a single word or up to a couple of sentences for between one and three marks. Open response, usually a few sentences or a very short paragraph for four marks. Calculation, these could be short or long and vary in mark allocation. Extended open response, where students are required to develop extended written arguments and to draw well-evidenced and informed conclusions about geographical questions and issues. Is utilise a level-based mark scheme. Our command words will be used consistently to assess particular skills across mark tariffs. This slide shows the command words that were used in points mark questions with the mark tariff of between one and four marks. This table shows the different command words that can be used for extended writing questions across papers one, two and three. But use a level based mark scheme with the weightings of marks by assessment objectives. The command words assess and evaluate are the two command words that could be used for the eight mark extended response questions. The final 12 mark question on paper three will always use the command select and justify. These will remain the same for the lifetime of the specification to ensure consistency year on year when meeting the assessment objectives. This means you can also see the proportion of the different skills required for students in extended responses so they can be clear what's required of them for each command word. Please note the total marks do not include any additional spelling, punctuation and grammar marks. The first two rows above of the command words are targeting A01 identify and define. Calculate, label, draw and compare are targeting A04, the skills, a standalone skills questions. These are capped at three marks. Describe and explain can target A01, A02, A04 and are capped at four marks. Assess and evaluate are sometimes targeting A02 and A03. And if the question uses a resource or is set in a fieldwork context, then it is targeting A03 and A04. Select and justify is targeting A03 and A04 and A02. You can clearly see the trend in the dots on the above chart. This represents the ramp in demand with the lower tariff and lower demand command words on the top left and the higher order evaluatory command words with the higher mark tariffs to allow for that 35% of AO3 applying knowledge and understanding to interpret, analyse and evaluate geographical issues and information and make judgments moving towards the bottom right. The last 12 mark question in paper three, and that's the last question of the whole qualification, is the 12 mark select and justify command word. The mark tariff for extended response question types varies across the components as shown in the table. This shows the different command words we can use for extended writing. Using, of course, the level based mark schemes with the weightings of marks by assessment objective. These will remain the same for the lifetime of the specification. We have done this to demonstrate how we are transparently and consistently meeting the assessment objectives. This means you can also see the proportion of the different skills required of students in the extended responses so they can be clear what's required of for each command word. <coughs> Different types of eight mark extended response questions. The eight mark extended response questions in paper one 
will not include any stimulus material and will be assessing the student's geographical understanding and their ability to, pl to apply this through either some assessment or evaluation. These questions will have a weighting of four marks for AO2 for knowledge and understanding and a further four marks for AO3 for the successful application of this within the context of the question. Whereas the eight mark questions in paper two and three will have some form of resource linked to the question or are being used in the context of a fieldwork item or a making a geographical decision question where skills are being tested. Again, there will be mark, four marks available for AO3, but now there will be four marks available for AO4 rather than AO2. This is because students are being tested on their ability to select, adapt, and use a variety of skills and techniques to investigate questions and issues and communicate findings. We will be exploring how candidates manage these challenges in our final section. The math scheme levels are also divided up into AOs. The level descriptors are generic, used for all eight mark AO2 and AO3 questions. There are separate sets of descriptors for the AO3, AO4 questions. While the indicative content can change depending on the topic or question, the levels do not. They will be the same each year. They provide a checklist of what is required to get into each level. In this final session, we will be looking at student responses from the summer 2019 examination papers, plus some questions from 2022. The purpose of this is to give some insight into how the questions worked in practice, especially those more challenging extended writing questions. We will be using answers to questions from all three papers, but mostly drawn from the eight mark questions that are the most challenging although we begin with two explain questions. Low tariff questions with one to four marks, for example, calculation questions are point marked. And the mark scheme for these questions offer possible, although not definitive ways of gaining these points with marks. So too are the explain questions. They're all point marked, but they come in three different forms. Explain what? where the tariff is anything from two to four marks, explain to, which will always have a tariff of four marks, and explain, which leaves it up to the candidate to determine how many points to make and then expand on. For all, the golden rule is they will not be rewarded for descriptive points, however sophisticated they may be. And there is usually one or two explanatory points required, each of which can gain another one mark for development. These questions carry 40% of the total marks across the specification, and it's vital that centres know how these are marked. So we will begin with two examples, one from paper one and one from paper three. Pause the recording and download and open the Delegate Activity booklet. Here you can access all the examples. Answers. Pause the recording and locate example one from the delegate booklet on page one. This is an example of an ex explain question from paper one, and in this case, it's asking for two negative impacts. The mark strip scheme illustrates how candidates can gain marks by explaining two separate impacts, and the further marks for explanation of how different age groups are affected. These questions will be point marked, and you can see there are a range of possible answers, and as always, any other appropriate response can be accepted. On screen are two sample responses. 
that can also be found on page one of the delegate booklet. How many marks would you award this response? Press pause and start the recording when you've had a chance to mark this. Answer one lights up the two impacts clearly. The first identifies young girls and the process related to globalisation is explained. So two marks are here. It is worth emphasising that this response seems to frame young girls in this country negatively, as though they have a choice. But remember that this is a student answer in high pressured exam conditions. The second is less typical, but again identifies a particular age group and identifies a process. Though it is less clear how exactly this follows from globalisation. Nonetheless, it's enough for two marks, so four marks in total. Answer two is clearly focused on globalisation and describes a well-known impact. However, the answer simply ignores the instruction to identify a particular age group, so it scores zero. On screen is a 2022 question from paper one which would require a very similar approach to the example one, as you can see from the examples in the mark scheme. Pause the recording and turn to page two of the delegate booklet, where you will find example two from paper two. This is another explain question with two differences between the upper and lower course of a river landscape need to be explained. On screen are two separate responses that can also be found on page two of the delegate book. How many marks would you, re would you reward this response? Press pause and start recording when you've had a chance to mark this response. Answer one only identifies one difference, that is river velocity. That is marginal to the landscape, but there are references to channel roughness, roughness, which are indeed part of the landscape, albeit a rather narrow one. There is a basic point that is extended, so two marks. Answer two is focused throughout. The student, the student uses a sensible device of firstly and secondly to highlight where one part of the answer begins and the other ends. The first half is stronger than the second because the focus of landscape in its proper sense is clearer. But given that river channels are part of the landscape, the second part is also worth both available marks. It's similar to answer two in its focus, so four marks in total. On screen is a 2022 question from paper two, which would require a very similar approach to example two. Pause the recording and turn to page three and four of the delegate booklet, where you will find example three from paper one. This is an example of an eight mark assessed question from paper one. These questions will be marked using a level based mark scheme and in this case, marks will be awarded for AO2 for demonstration of understanding of places, environments and processes, and AO3 for application and making informed judgments. Pause the recording and have a go at marking. Read the response and place the answer in a level. This response got level two and was awarded six marks. This example illustrates two simple points. Firstly, although this is an issues based specification, both examples and case studies are required in a number of areas. Good locational knowledge would have been very helpful in elevating the sample to level three. And this response is virtually no locational detail or numeric data but it is well focused on the dichotomy between primary and secondary impacts. 
There are some curious confusions and errors in the last few lines. For example, hurricanes are secondary effects of earthquakes. But positive marking is employed. On screen is a 2022 question from paper one, which would require a very similar approach to the example three. Pause the recording and turn to page five of the delegate booklet, where you will find example four from paper one. This is an example of an eight mark assess question from paper one which is marked in the same way as example three, but this question has an additional four marks available for spelling, punctuation and grammar. Now have a go at marking. Read the response and place the answer in the level. This response was put in the top of level one, three marks. In contrast to the last example, this example has good locational knowledge and some understanding of India's trade liberalization since 1991. Once again, there are obvious errors of fact that India's got flat topography and moderate climate, but this is not the main issue with this response. The answer has very little focus on the question. Despite the statement that ends the answer, there is, in fact, no significant reference to India's international role. In all three papers, a real effort is made to use specification wording questions, and candidates need to be prepared accordingly. Pause the recording and turn to page six and seven of the delegate booklet where you'll find example five from paper two. You'll also need figures 4a and 4b on page eight of paper two question paper in your download pack. This is an example of an eight mark assessed question from paper two. Although it has the same command word as examples three and four, this question is different as it requires the candidate to analyze the geographical resource and therefore marks will be awarded for AO4 for using geographical skills and AO3 for the application and making informed judgments. Now have a go at marking. Read the response and place the answer in a level. This response was put in the top of level three and got the full eight marks. This example comes from a candidate who achieved the equivalent of a grade nine on this paper. This answer is impressive, but neither perfect nor comprehensive. Three of the questions on this paper are resource based in which students use AO4 skills to extract information from the resource and AO3 critical thinking skills to deconstruct this information and apply it to the questions asked. They have no prior knowledge of what the results will be, nor will they necessarily have much AO2 knowledge and understanding to fall back on, as is in the expectation in the paper one examples. The candidate manipulates data, offers an overview, and why some rocks are more likely to form uplands, although this isn't strong, has some idea. However, the candidate also offers other reasons to explain variations in topography, including tectonics and differential weathering. On screen is a 2022 question from paper two, which would require a very similar approach to example five. Pause the recording and turn to page eight and nine of the delegate booklet where you'll find example six from paper two. And this is an example of an eight mark assessed question from paper two. Every year candidates will be challenged by one eight mark question of their own fieldwork, which has no resource. These questions will be marked using a level based mark scheme. 
and the request the question requires the candidate to refer to their own familiar fieldwork results and the marks will be awarded for AO4 for using geographical skills and AO3 for application and making informed judgments. Now have a go at marking, read the response and place the answer in a level. This response was put into level three and again got the full eight marks. The answer offers three aspects of the data collection methodology, which is described in some detail, and initially seen to be as accurate as possible. Later in the answer, they introduced the issue of timing and the challenge of tide. The third element is the demographics of the beach population, and the candidate explicitly, if belatedly, relates this to reliability. This is an excellent example of an answer which satisfies the level descriptions well and a reminder that none of the eight mark questions are point marked. Every year, candidates will be challenged by one eight mark question on their own familiar fieldwork, which has no resource, and one eight mark question on an unfamiliar fieldwork scenario that does have a resource. Pause the recording and turn to page 10 of the Delegate Booklet, where you will find example 7 from paper 3. You will also need to find figure 9 from paper 3 question paper, which can be found on page 10 of the Resource Booklet and is part of the question paper file. This paper, like paper two, is heavily weighted towards questions that test skills of candidates in extracting information from resources and deconstructing them in order to address the questions asked. These questions we mark using a level-based mark scheme. The question requires the candidate to analyse a geographical resource and therefore marks will be awarded for AO4 and AO3. And this is from question paper three. Read the response and place the answers in the right level. This response was put into level three, eight marks. The question requires candidates to be aware of what might constitute a challenge. In this exemplar, challenges are split into different categories, which provides the framework for an answer that blends AO4, extraction of resource booklet information, and AO3, commentary to assess these challenges. Blending together different elements of the resources, as this answer does, is a very effective approach to accessing level three marks. Once again, plausibility is the key here given that there is no expectation that candidates have any prior knowledge of this particular scenario, although they have material from topic 7, 8 and 9 to fall back on. On screen is a 2022 question from paper 3, which would require a very similar approach to example 7. Pause the recording and turn to page 11 and 12 of the delegate booklet, where you will find example eight from paper three. This is an example of a 12 mark question. Note, there will only ever be one 12 mark question, and that will always be the final question on paper three, and there will be an additional four marks for spelling, punctuation, and grammar. This question will require candidates to demonstrate understanding of concepts, places, environments and processes, AO2, and to use geographical skills, AO4, and to make judgments that are supported with evidence, AO3. Now have a go at marking. 
read the response and place the answer in a level. This response was put into level four and got 10 marks plus four spelling, punctuation and grammar marks. This is a sound answer from a candidate who, like many others, is increasingly well trained to answer these justify your choice, choice questions. The assessment objectives are four AO3 and 4AO4, but also 4AO2, which is worth flagging up with some emphasis to students. It's often the weakest area of the responses. The answer has good AO4, using materials selectively, but accurately to reinforce points that justify their choice, AO3, but very little AO2, which impacts on the final mark. That could easily be done because all they've covered issues such as the impact on local communities. For example, several mentioned the parallels with indigenous people of Ecuador or the oil shale exploited in Alberta. This answer is well structured and argues its case, although there isn't enough counter argument and a general lack of greyness, seeing this is a very clear choice indeed, as is a as is typical of those operating close to low level three boundary. On screen, the final question from paper 2022 question paper, which would give a, a which would require a very similar approach to example eight. Now let us take a look at how we can support you further with teaching and assessment of this specification. In addition to all the exam materials from 2018 onwards, the sample assessment materials, a set of specimen papers and bespoke support material targets types of learner and specific components of the specification. Edexcel offers a large range of free qualification support for teachers. A selection of these CPG opportunities are listed on this slide. John Walton is our specialist geography subject advisor and his contact details are on the screen now. Please do not hesitate to contact John if you have any further questions about GCSE Geography. Pearson Edexcel has also produced a range of resources to support the delivery of this qualification. For example, the course-specific student textbook. There is also a range of endorsed resources available to support teachers in, this, in the planning and delivery of this qualification. Several of these are shown on this slide. On this slide, you can see an example of another resource produced by Pearson to support qualification. In this case, a revision workbook. And finally, on this slide is an example of yet another resource produced by Pearson, the Target 5 book, which focuses on the skills needed to achieve Grade 5. This now brings us to the end of this training session. Thank you again for setting aside time today to watch this training. I do hope that you have found it helpful and that it provided you with a good understanding about the requirements and workings of this qualification. Good luck.